Okay, so at tryouts, I started with a little bit of pain, but every single time I'd run, I'd kind of feel it. And we were running during tryouts, and I stepped and I turned. We were doing suicides, and felt a numbness in my right legs. You know, as a mom, um, no one wants to see their kids injured. For him to come home on crutches, my heart just broke. I think I just started crying. We are a very sports oriented family. My um, husband went to college on a sports scholarship, baseball scholarship, and uh, Kyle's grandfather actually played in the minor leagues. So baseball and sports in general have always been very big uh, in our family. I played basketball, soccer, and baseball. And just like my brother, my parents were making us decide between two, so I picked baseball and basketball. Sports was always kind of a big thing around here, so it was nice to be able to play and be big in it too. In the summer of uh, 2017, um, Kyle was working out at a sports training facility and came home and started complaining of lower back pain. And I kind of just poo pooed it and told him, uh, to work through it because he wasn't um, particularly active at that time and I thought it was just because he hadn't worked out in a while and he had sore muscles so um, I didn't take it very seriously. I uh, felt lower back pain and it got progressively worse over the beginning of the school year in September and then during basketball trials. I think it was around September, I took him to an orthopedist and the orthopedist uh, did some x-rays and came back and told us that Kyle suffered from uh, a condition called unilateral sacralization, which is a condition, a genetic condition that he was actually born with. He said it was just normal back pain that I'd have to play through it, take off a few weeks and play again. I mean, we followed the doctor's advice, but Kyle continued to complain about the back pain. Late October, I finally tweaked it, and it really started hurting to the point where I couldn't walk. And at that point, I knew that it was more than just what the orthopedist told us. So I reached out to Dr. Max, asking him what we should do from here. I have, for the past uh, 40 years as a chiropractor, been very interested in, in sports medicine. And particularly, I've spent a lot of time uh, working with a lot of high school kids. And as I've learned more through the years and become you know, more skilled at dealing with athletes, I had four years, I had the good fortune spending in the New York Giants locker room working in their strength department, uh, I started realizing what uh, we weren't providing we weren't doing for our high school kids. So I have knocked on doors for many years at high schools uh, trying to get more involved with the athletic department in an effort to both prevent injuries and to do a better job of treating injuries. Four and a half years ago I had the good fortune Christian Brothers Academy in Albany, New York said yes. I'm in the middle of my day and all of a sudden a young kid comes walking in on crutches. Well, that's not normally how low back problems present. So he introduced himself, Kyle Rubalata. And Dr. Mag suggested that we actually uh, meet him at his office. I didn't want to retake x-rays, even though we take x-rays standing. I wanted an MRI because on an MRI, it's going to show an awful lot of information that is probably the underlying cause for Kyle. Here is his MRI report. If you get an MRI report, it goes through each level, not too much. It tells about his sacralization, but here's what matters. There is significant marrow edema in the right L4 pedicle and pars without fracture line, consistent with a stress reaction or a pending spondylo. 
And Kyle had a condition known as a pending spondylolisthesis. That's bone inflammation. Inflammation in the bone that is caused by a constant stress over a period of time. And it's a very serious condition because if left unattended, that bone can fracture, creating a, a series of possibilities that you'd prefer that Kyle doesn't go through. So here's the axial view and you can see the increased bright signal. Now here is where it's interesting too. The T1 fluid is dark. So there it is. T2 fluid is brighter, but stir fluid is brightest. Okay, so he has significant marrow edema. Well, this opens up the whole new world of how we're treating Kyle. The treatment is you have to shut the kid down for three to four months. <coughs> they have to go to an orthotist, be fitted for a Boston overlap brace, a hard rigid brace. We also we're gonna do cold laser for three days a week. Um, and so we immediately went out and got the brace and started laser therapy, um, you know, the same week we got the diagnosis. And how long was Kyle coming in before he um, didn't feel the pain anymore? Well, people cannot believe the benefits of laser, but laser reduces pain, reduces inflammation. Kyle came into me on crutches on November 8th at his worst stage of pain. In 12 days, he was out of pain, and that was at the point that we were able to do our structural fingerprint exam. The structural fingerprint exam allows us to learn why Kyle had this area of irritation. It's due to imbalances over time. So we did an exam which includes a digital foot scan and it includes x-rays, standing x-rays. On the digital foot scan, we can see that Kyle's feet have collapsed relative to uh, optimal feet and that's what we call pronation. On the x-ray, we can see one hip is lower, so we know Kyle has one leg that is shorter than the other and therefore we had to use orthotics to address the pronation and put a lift on his short leg side so that we could get the hips level, removing the stress from that area. I started feeling more strength in my back again, and that helped a lot. So then I talked to Dr. Mags about it, and we decided to get another MRI. He came back, it was now nine weeks after the MRI report of significant marrow edema, and the findings were the marrow edema seen on the prior MRI involving the right L4 pedicle and pars is resolved. He was healed. Unbelievable. I mean, it was one of the most exciting days in my office because we were all so invested in this case. Uh, Dr. Max helps a lot of the other kids and they tell me all the time about what he does and, and that it really helps them too through the minute of their season, through the dog days of their season. So what he's doing is definitely helping not just me but the other kids at CBA. And so Kyle went quickly from not playing baseball this year to having a tremendous year in baseball. And we all celebrated and, uh, you know, they as a family just did a phenomenal job of doing what they had to do. You know, it's been really awesome that Christian Brothers Academy has allowed Dr. Mags uh, to come in and treat the athletes uh, at the school. Um, it's been just so helpful not just for our family, I'm sure for other families, because he's been able to help prevent injuries from happening. Fortunately, I was there and I understood the condition. We have a facility to care for it. And it all, uh, you know, the stars lined up and Kyle ended up with a very good year. All right. oh, oh.